Good afternoon, good night, good morning, whatever you're doing today. Hope you're feeling comfortable. This is a little different show today. This is called, uh, we welcome you to David Loves Comics. Uh, just let you know, I do extra work in Chicago. Uh, I'm a background artist, and a lot of films have been shot here in Chicago. A lot of great films. And uh, I'm going to break up a series of playlists of some of the odds and ends of being an extra and some of my experiences of really being on the on the set. Uh, I'm gonna break them down one by one by just famous directors that I have was able to encounter and just observe them for a day or two or a week. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted to emphasize was life lessons or tips that you can probably get from really observing someone at their at their craft or their passion of their art. Uh, one of the things I really want to emphasize is I had an opportunity to work with, uh, be on the set with as an extra, uh, Christopher Nolan, The Dark Knight, and Zack Snyder, The Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. And if anything, if I can just get to really the meat of the subject that made me really want to do this video was observing two men two different styles uh, one is kind of controversial and uh, they're both controversies in their own ways but the Christopher Nolan his working style was just so fascinating and the meat of it on the particular scene I was doing uh, I if, uh, somehow I ended up got picked as a roster gang leader, believe it or not. And where I was sitting at, uh, for some reason he kind of noticed I was sitting there and was saying, you know, if this person, you know, he doesn't fit the profile of someone who's coming out of prison. And, uh, you know, and so he moved me around and put me in a different s selection. But the main thing, what I was really fascinated with was... Christopher Nolan. Now, this is something I, I want to emphasize to people who work on any type of set. If you can find out any tidbit or any research of any fandom, uh, it's good to know the person if you can find out who is the actual director because you will be pleasantly surprised, well, maybe not pleasantly surprised, of how many people, like Christopher Nolan was on the set and I think maybe five out of a hundred of us actually knew who he was. Uh, but I was familiar with Batman Begins 2005, so I knew who the director was. Uh, it was coded as Roy's first kiss, a tribute to Christopher Bell's son. Uh, so it had a dummy name. But immediately on the set, I recognized him. But Christopher Nolan has such an air of style and British and uh, he's very polite but very controlling and very non-emotional and I guess people have complained a lot about his films but I was just more fascinated that at the time he's looking at the set looking at slides from the next following day then had an iPad he was looking at and he was preparing the scene for the next day. So on a level, he was doing three things at once. But not multitasking, but it was layering. He knew the vision you could see that he wanted and everyone was just completing that picture. And I just find that so fascinating. Uh, he had someone that he would, you know, he had a, you know, British accent, but I mean, it was not an unearthly accent, but just to make sure he would whisper to someone else and say, have them move to the left a little bit. Director wants you to move a little left. Have them move to the left. The director wants you to move to the left, move to the right, make them louder, make them louder. So he had someone translate, even though it, you know, he was just speaking British. Uh, you know, he had a British accent, but 
He was very calm and cool. And only when, when I saw Inception, one of his great films, I just said to myself, that's how he thinks. That, that's how his mind works, of layer upon layer, and of a complete vision. And uh, he was just, I mean, it was a wonderful time on the set. But I'll go into more detail about that story. But that's just a quick synopsis of it. Uh, but to counter in a different way, uh, I was in a train scene that uh, in Batman vs. Superman. It was deleted. I didn't even get to see myself in it. But I had the pleasure of spending the day on the, you know, on the set. The weirdness thing about it, of how much the director's personality seems to infect or inspire the people that they work around them. I mean, anyone who does any hiring, any boss, you seem to lean, we, we like it or not, we seem to lean, we seem to hire people with similar personalities and styles. I just think maybe people think that's, we, I don't know if we consciously recognize it, but Zack Snyder is very fitness, exercise, He's very bouncy. He is like a, a quasi Richard Simmons, uh, full of energy, uh, with a business suit. Uh, but everyone on the set, I mean, it was like using a gym. I mean, everybody had, you know, I guess times had changed from 2008 to, I think, 2016, uh, maybe 15. But everybody was green juice, smoothies, pineapples, mushroom shirts. Uh, there was a makeup artist, I'll never forget. She just won an uh, award for Vice for best hair and makeup. But, you know, it was a white woman, Caucasian, with, you know, dreadlocks. And just, you know, slapping on little makeup and just, I mean, a wonderful scene. Uh, and Zack Snyder... Everyone had tablets but him. He just seemed to run from one end of the one end of the platform to another. And uh three o'clock, train scene, all tired, wore out. And I remember walking up and down the stairs, uh, for the particular scene. And I just I closed my eyes and just went, you know, and all of a sudden, someone's fixing my tie. And uh, they said, I know it's been a long night. And, but you're doing so good. We are so close. You are doing a great job. Don't you forget it. And I opened my eyes, and it was Zack Snyder. I'm just like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. He said, no, don't apologize. And then again, another occasion, most people... I mean, I've seen Zack Snyder from Watchmen and other films and behind the scenes directories, uh, features on DVDs or Blu-rays. But, you know, he is kind of a well, I mean, he's a well-known uh, director, but most people like, man, that, uh, you know, that makeup guy or costume guy, he's really, he's really bouncy. And I was like, no, that is the director. Uh, and so I'm just like, wow. So I've, I've never forgot, I said, from both sets of directors with different products, whatever you may like the film or not like the films, the, you know, uh, Nolan or Snyder. It's not a competition, but it was just fascinating that the styles of each of them was working, you know. Nolan was more of a hands-off, looking at the full project. What works for him, we can't deny that. And Zack Snyder was just like a big giant, you know, cheerleader, encouraging and whatever the direction go and so I'll go more into detail later on about more and more experiences but if anything this video was just a just a snippet that uh, no matter type of what work you do or what place you at or wherever you at from a movie set to a showroom to a gas station people's working styles especially when it's the passion of someone it's just amazing the difference uh, styles to achieve the same results to making a great film. So, so like I said, I'll make more videos, but I just want to just I just want to capture that while I was in my head today. So this is David Loves Comics, and uh, I'll be showing you some more extra 
uh, stories of behind the scenes. And uh, I got a great one with uh, Ron Howard for a couple of years ago. Very yeah, my God. I can tell you right now, another sweetheart of a person. Uh, but once again, you have a good day and look forward to my next uh, video. All right, take care. Peace.